Hello and welcome to LifeBridge Health's Facebook Live interview series. I'm Tom Gill, and today we are live at WJZ Channel 13, where our team from the Krieger Eye Institute is answering viewers' calls and questions on eye health as part of our Ask the Expert. If you're watching right here in Baltimore, you can see this on the Krieger Eye Institute tonight in the news at 4, 5, and 6 p.m. Right here on Facebook, we are going to be talking to Don Abrams, director of the Krieger Eye Institute, about taking care of our eyes. And if you have a question for Dr. Abrams, please post it in the comments section below. If we don't get to your question here on Facebook Live, you can submit a question through our website and we can answer it there. The address is lifebridgehealth.org slash ask the expert. All right, without further ado, uh, welcome Dr. Abrams. Hi, how are you? All right, let's just jump right into the first question. And again, if you have questions, you can certainly post it on uh, down below and we'll get to as many as we can get to as we uh, roll along here on this Facebook Live. Uh, the first question that came in is, uh, I use a computer all day long and my eyes feel strained. What should I do about that? Well, there's, there's lots of things that can cause strain when you're using a computer. Uh, depending on your age, it could be that you're, you need a specific uh, eyeglass prescription to adequately see the screen. Sometimes people have a little bit of dry eye, which can be a little bit of a problem. Um, so there's, there's a number of different things you can do. Uh, the first thing I would say is, uh, sometimes people are staring at a screen continuously all day. It's nice to take a few seconds break now and then. So after 10 or 15 minutes, take your eyes off the screen and look at something far away, focus on it for five seconds or 10 seconds, and then go back to work. And sometimes that relieves a little bit of the strain. You can also put an, an artificial teardrop in your eye uh, right before you start with the computer. And sometimes that can soothe your eye and make things a little bit better. And finally, you know, you may, you may actually need a, a prescription for, for eyeglasses to see the screen. Most people over the age of 40 or 45 need reading glasses, but sometimes you need uh, a, a weak version of reading glasses just to see the computer screen properly. So those are the things you can do about that. Okay, uh, just checking in some of our questions. Um, one that came in says that uh, my contacts have gotten uncomfortable and feel dry. Uh, could this be allergies? Well, sure, it could be allergies. Some people that wear contact lenses can develop an allergy to the, to the material that uh, the contact lens is made of. So sometimes your eye care professional needs to refit you for a different type of contact lenses. Um, sometimes dry eyes are, are coincident with people that use uh, contact lenses. So re-wetting drops during the day can make contact lenses feel a little bit better. And finally, regular allergies, depending on what season of the year you're bothered by them, can make contact lenses a little bit more difficult to wear. So sometimes you might need to use your allergy, allergy drops before you put the contact lenses in and after you take them out. So um, there's a number of different things you can do with contacts and allergies. Okay, another question that came in is that sometimes that they see some little specks in their eyes. Is that something that you should be worried about? Well, when we talk about little specks in the eye, they're typically what we call floaters. And floaters are little areas of degeneration of the vitreous jelly, which is the jelly that fills up most of the eye behind the lens of the eye. And these little specks for the vast majority of people are of no consequence. Um, basically, the specks are just little bits of twisted up protein. And when light goes through that, you see the little shadow of these little proteins and you see the little specks. Sometimes the specks look like little gnats, sometimes they look like little strings or spider webs, but for the most part, that's okay. Um, if you have floaters associated with flashing lights or decreased vision, that might be a little bit more worrisome. And if you do have that, then you need to see your ophthalmologist to be checked for things like retinal tears or retinal detachments. Okay, just checking in, we got a couple of questions uh, coming in. Sharon writes that sometimes it, um, when she's uh, looking at small print, like on her phone, it's blurry, uh, and sometimes she, you know, gets vision is kind of blurry when she's tired. Is this a sign that she would need to buy some reading glasses? Uh, well, typically, depending on your age, uh, the the focusing ability of your eye decreases. So, uh, the first things that people start noticing is that they start holding things further away from their eyes so they can see them. And when people have difficulty seeing their phone, it depends on how far away you're holding it. But depending on your age you may need to start wearing uh, some mild reading glasses to use your phone and then even stronger ones if you're holding things a bit closer uh, like small print books or things like that. And uh, Krieger, you guys have a full selection of glasses to choose from? 
Yeah, the Krieger Eye Institute, we have uh, the two optical shops in two of our locations, and we have all the glasses that you might want. Um, sometimes uh, you need a prescription glass that, that, that is specific for you, but sometimes uh, some of the over-the-counter reading glasses are just as well for some of these, for some patients. Uh, also looking in, a um, couple questions coming in that I have a good vision, but how often or when should I get an eye exam if I have good vision? Um, we do recommend that people without any risk factors for any eye diseases, you probably should still get your eyes uh, checked every two to four years until you're 40 and then probably every year or two after that. Um, once you get into your 60s and 70s, it probably should be annually. If you have any risk factors for glaucoma, things like um, being um, African American or Asian, sometimes there's an increased risk of glaucoma, so the frequency it, for checkups should be increased. Most African Americans, uh, because of the high risk of glaucoma in that group of people, probably ought to be seen annually over the age of 40. If you have any family history, then maybe even sooner than that. Uh, so uh, it really depends on what your risk factor situation is. All right, so Sarah's writing in that. Uh what are the symptoms or treatments of tired eyes, and how can you distinguish that between uh, tired eyes and dry eyes? Well, I have patients that complain about tired eyes all the time. They say they feel tired when they sit down to read. And your body is what gets tired. Your eyes don't get tired. They may feel tired, and it could be because you have a little bit of dryness. And what happens is when your eyes get a little bit dry, your eyelids want to close to protect your cornea. And when your eyelids start to close, then you probably, it makes your body feel like you're tired. So it could all emanate from a little bit of dryness. So those people who have those symptoms, I usually say, you know, go ahead and put an artificial teardrop in uh, right before you sit down to read or sit down to use the computer. And usually you can get, get more time in, in that activity before you start feeling tired. While we're on the topic of uh, tired and sleepiness, Someone asked the question, can you sleep with your contact lenses in? I'm a firm believer in not sleeping with contact lenses in. I know there are a few brands where, where some eye care professionals say, yes, you can leave them in for a week or leave, leave them in for two weeks. But uh, I don't believe in that. I think all contact lenses should be removed and cleaned in the evening. I think a lot of patients may be better off with daily wear disposables where they don't even have to do any cleaning. You just put a new pair in every day, take them out, throw them away. But even if you're wearing the ones that you can wear longer, you should really take them out and clean them in the evening. Uh, there are the people that wear contact lenses overnight. Sometimes they can start to uh, get a little bit stuck. They can cause scratches to your corneas, which could end up with uh, corneal infections, which could cause significant visual loss. So uh, having seen a number of those cases over the years, I would, I would never really allow any of my patients to sleep in their contact lenses. What are some of the symptoms of having uh, cataracts? Uh, cataracts uh, do have various visual symptoms. Most patients that have early cataracts that start to have complaints, they usually say they have a little bit more difficulty driving at night. They start to see halos around oncoming car lights. Uh, in some cases, they also complain of a little bit more difficulty reading. They complain that they need a lot more light to, to see to do most tasks. Um, cataracts are basically when the lens of the eye starts to become a little bit opacified. But in some cases, it's really the lens of the eye, which is clear, stays a little bit clear, but instead of being, you know, kind of just clear like glass, it could be looking like a clear pair of yellow sunglasses. So when the lens starts to turn a little bit yellow, it does start to absorb some of the on incoming light. So in order for you to see normally, you may need more light on the subject to allow you to, to, to see things better. Um, uh, also, depending on how quickly the cataracts form and, and what the actual cataract looks like, you could have other things. You could have um, significant blurriness. Uh, you could have times of day when things are better and other times when it's worse, depending upon your pupil size. So um, any, any kind of visual concern could be a cataract. Um, I would say if you have uh, any kind of complaints with blurred vision, you really ought to be evaluated because not every time is it a cataract. It could be other things like macular degeneration or glaucoma or or um, diabetic retinopathy or any of the other eye diseases. Okay. So uh, Sarah wrote in, she said that her three-month-old son uh, doesn't tear out of his left eye in the morning. There is frequent uh, eye crust in his left eye. Is this something she should be concerned about? 
Well, you know, infants do sometimes have tearing issues. Sometimes they tear too much. Sometimes they don't tear enough. Um, in general, um, most of these things work themselves out, you know, in the first year of life. Uh, if you're very concerned, you can take your, your child to an ophthalmologist or a pediatric ophthalmologist for evaluation. Usually, um, the, some of the tear duct issues do resolve. Sometimes it's a matter of just massaging the tear ducts in the infants early on. But if there's still a problem over the age of uh, a year or nine months or a year, you probably ought to have the child evaluated. Okay. And um, Allie writes in, she says, a lot of eye drops bother my eyes. What would you recommend that I use for contact solution or eye drops that won't cause inflammation or irritation? Well, you know, most of the eye drops on the market do have preservatives in them. So there, a lot of people are allergic to some of those preservatives. So uh, for, for somebody like that who's wearing contact lenses, uh, sometimes some of the uh, re-wetting drops that are in bottles may not be the right thing because of the preservatives in them. So you might end up having to use uh, some of the non-preserved artificial tears. Usually non-preserved tears come um, in little, little tiny plastic twist off dispensers for one time use uh, and because of that they don't they don't need to have preservatives in them so it may be that you need to go buy one of the commercially available preservative free drops like sustained preservative free vials or I think refresh makes uh, vials that are also preservative free in the little plastic tubes okay and uh, again just a reminder that you're watching uh, Lifebridge Health's Facebook live from WJZ TV where experts from the Krieger Eye Institute are answering calls from viewers with questions about eye health. Right here on Facebook, we're talking with Dr. Don Abrams about uh, eye health. And on Facebook, you can post this question right here in the comments section and by submitting it. Or if we don't get to your question, you can do it on the website, which is lifebridgehealth.org slash ask the expert. If we don't answer your question on Facebook Live, we'll answer it on the website, which again is lifebridgehealth.org slash ask the expert. Let's jump into uh, another few questions here. What is macular de uh, degeneration? Yeah, well, macular degeneration uh, is a disease of the center part of the retina. Um, it's where uh, some of the layers of the retina aren't working properly, and uh, the layer of the retina that is generally responsible for bringing in nutrients and taking away waste products from the cells just aren't working perfectly. So what happens is you can get buildups of um, waste products that can start to cause some uh, distortion in, in your vision. <coughs> Excuse me. They can also, um, because of the nature of the vascular supply of the retina there, the, the, some new blood vessels can start to grow um, and cause different sorts of issues. Basically, macular degeneration is sort of broken down into two main categories. The dry kind, which is the kind where there's just accumulations of uh, uh, this cellular debris and areas of atrophy, and the wet kind, which is where new blood vessels are growing. The wet kind is the kind that tends to progress relatively rapidly, and you may know people who get injections into their eyes, and those are the patients that, with macular degeneration that have the wet type, which is about 10% of the macular degeneration patients. Since the mid-2000s, we've had these injections, which have been terrific to help to prevent further decreasing vision and to stabilize people's vision. The dry kind, uh, right now, the major uh, treatments are uh, just sort of palliative. We, we do recommend patients use um, some of the eye care vitamins to help um, with the antioxidant situation, which can help sometimes stabilize the retina. Uh, if you do have it, it you obviously probably already being seen by an ophthalmologist and or a retina specialist and probably getting the right amount of follow-up. Okay, Nicole asked the question, is glaucoma genetic? If her mom or uncle have it, is there a good chance she's going to get it too? Uh, there, are, there are genes that are encoded for glaucoma. It's a very multifactorial, multigenetic issue. Um, uh, in practice, uh, if you have relatives with glaucoma, you probably do have an increased risk of getting it. Uh, the risk is probably greater if you have siblings with glaucoma rather than aunts, uncles, or grandparents with glaucoma. Um, depending upon your particular situation, that, that can be a significant risk factor for glaucoma. If you have a family history of glaucoma 
and you have and you're African American, you are very high risk of glaucoma. So depending upon your situation, uh, the risk factors can pile up and uh, uh, make it more imperative that you get careful follow up. Okay, uh, another question. When I blow my nose hard, sometimes clear fluid comes out of the lower of my lower eye. Is this normal? Well, the tear ducts are connected to the back of your throat, so or the back of your nose. So um, it's not impossible for uh, you to blow your nose and have the material in your nose go the other direction. It would be uncommon, but I suppose if you blow your nose blow your nose hard enough, it can happen. And uh, how does diabetes impact your eye health? Well, diabetes is a significant uh, cause of um, uh, eye disease, and we call it diabetic retinopathy. Um, people who have relatively unstable blood sugars have a risk of having the blood vessels in the retina becoming more incompetent. So basically some of the very tiny vessels become weak. They can start to leak fluid and cause swelling. Sometimes they can actually bleed uh, and actually cause significant visual loss. So the main way to treat and or prevent diabetic retinopathy is to try to keep your blood sugar in the best control it can possibly be. Once you have diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, you need careful follow-up by an ophthalmologist or a retina specialist. Uh, I generally recommend if you have diabetes and do not have any evidence of diabetic eye disease, you should still be seen on an annual basis no matter what your age is. If you start to have even the minor changes, you need to be seen every six months. Just like with macular degeneration, some of the significant swelling and bleeding that you get from diabetic retinopathy can be treated with some of the same injection materials. Okay. Well, uh, that's about all the time we have for today. Our thanks to Dr. Don Abrams from the Krieger Eye Institute. Just a reminder that if we didn't get to your questions, we'll try to answer them on our website, which is lifebridgehealth.org slash ask the expert. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like us on Facebook and uh, on Instagram and Twitter as well. And if you are in need of eye care, be sure to check out the Krieger Eye Institute. Their website is lifebridgehealth.org slash Krieger Eye. I'm Tom Gill for LifeBridge Health, and we'll see you next time.